Yo, what's up everybody? I'm gonna show you today how I created this digital flower at the Beeple Digital Art Deathmatch, all live on stage. And I created this, I think in like 20 minutes or something like that. I'm gonna be able to do it all with just Octane and an HDRI, no other additional kind of assets to use here. So I'm gonna go into my front perspective view. You can see here, I got the Sublime Pen Tool and I'm gonna just start to create kind of the overall, maybe like floral path shape. And uh, just by clicking, holding, dragging some points around, um, maybe start, you know, by creating an initial curve here, have that curve kind of come up a little higher and maybe bring it down. And you can see I'm kind of doing some kind of like, I don't know, digital tulip type shape here. Maybe something like that. Maybe, uh, I don't know. This is where you kind of like play around with it a little bit, manipulate it. You know, this is kind of something similar to what I did, you know, at the digital art deathmatch. Now you really don't have a ton of time to come in here and keep like tweaking individual points. It's like, you know, once you kind of first get your initial general shape here like that's the shape that you have to go with there's not there's not a, a a ton of time here okay cool so let's say um i'm happy with uh this initial shape once you get that where you're kind of happy with all we're going to do is we're going to throw this into a cloner object but before we do that uh, we want to make sure that our anchor point is moved down to this kind of center point it'll just make everything a little bit easier so we'll enable the axi tool and i'll just move this down roughly to that kind of point and disable enable axi throw it into the cloner change the cloner to radial right you can already see this kind of digital kind of flower shape taking form now on the spline path itself we can right click that go to c4d octane tags and we're going to add the octane object tag because we're going to convert this into hair so we may as well get our render going. And again, the only asset you'll need to kind of create this um, outside of Octane, of course, is going to be an HDRI. I did use that just to help light. I actually think we could probably just use some area lights as well. But knowing that I only had 20 minutes or less to, to have the whole thing from start to beginning or from start to end, beginning to, to end here to finish it. I knew that I just had to hop in and create. I had the HDRI assets ready to go. So I will put a texture environment and make the texture environment black. And I'm gonna just change this to visible environment. And then we'll throw in our HDRI environment in here as well. And I am going to use the HDRI link plus here. Now I didn't have this during the demo, but again, that's just going to let me easily access um, some HDRIs there and I'm just going to change it down to a preview size. Let's come in here. I'll set up some basic path tracing kernel. Love it. All right. And let's get a material. And for this, all I did was I created a specular material. I added the spec material to the spline. And in here into the comment, I did check and enable fake shadows. Uh, and we can go back in here in a moment and see if there's anything additional that we want to change in the index and and fun stuff like that. Now, in the actual spline itself, let's begin to kind of maybe increase the thickness of the path so that way we can make sure we're in fact seeing it. And you'll want to make sure that in here we do turn on render as hair so we can see it and we'll make a camera now for this i additionally made a camera that uh had a pretty long focal length here i don't remember the exact focal length but maybe something like 120. you're gonna see that we're probably gonna have to zoom out a little bit now as well excellent just kind of lined it up like that i threw a cylinder in here for kind of the overall stem and we could just move this down because then it was kind of going to go off screen. And I did put the same clear material on that as well. Again, to get real nice contrast in here, you know, finding an HDRI that, that fits really well is, is going to be important. But again, I didn't really have that many options during the digital art death match here. Um, okay, so yeah, let's let's maybe bring this down to like 
a we'll maybe bring this down to like 0.5 to get that real thin kind of look i did really heavily lean on depth of field in this one so let's increase the aperture and we'll just focus on one of these individual points i'll keep going here let's see how high we have to bring up the aperture to really make it so we're focused just on this aspect. Wow, that's crazy. I don't think I've ever gone up to uh, 200 on the aperture. Let's just keep going. All right, let's stick with that for, for the moment. Um, maybe even zoom in slightly a little bit more there we go you can see now refocus on our object and with the cloner object the count right that's going to be entirely up to you how much we kind of add or, or take away from that let's add about 80 and then i did throw a random effector onto that cloner object so i did a, a handful of these and this just kind of gives a little bit more variety i didn't really do a ton in position so let's bring these back down um and i did add some in the rotations of these pieces and same thing with the scale i didn't do uniform scale though um you can see that's probably too extreme let's see 0.05 yeah i was just trying to give you know a lot extra variety to this here in general and we can see already that it's beginning to create kind of a pretty interesting shape. And let's just try to focus back in on that front hair. Wonderful. And then I actually copied this same cloner. And so we can, I'll call this like main flower and we'll call this inside flower. And for this one, I did begin to transform this in the Y direction. So I made it a, a bit taller. I don't remember what I did. Remember, I was working pretty fast during this one and I did reduce the inside a little bit as well. So let's try like 1.5 for the inside here. Maybe even go a bit thinner on it. So like 0.25 and four, reduce that. And then I threw another random effector on this one as well. Let's see. There we go. There's our random. And for this one, again, I didn't really push the position too much, but let's see what happens if we do rotation here. We begin to kind of like spread this out a bit and maybe we'll make these even thinner. So let's go with like one. And let's see if we can rotate them. Right, you can see you really just kind of begin to play with a lot of stuff in here. Right, I might pull this back a little bit. Cool, it, it's somewhat interesting. Something's going on here. You can make another additional spline in here as well. And then I really kind of needed to make a stronger focus point. So what I ended up doing, I ended up taking a basic sphere. I might have turned it into like an icosahedron and just dropped the segments down a little bit, maybe deleted that font tag. You're not going to see it a whole lot inside there anyway. And I threw a diffuse material on it. Let's throw that in here. And in this diffuse material, um, I did a black body emission. And let's start messing with some of the camera settings. Again, if you know kind of my workflow, uh, I'll, I'll try to lean on more of the design throughout the piece. So let's kind of give this a little bit more of a bloom. Let's kind of increase uh, the, a, a glare a bit. Might want to start to begin to kind of mess with the cutoff as well, because really I want the glare to be coming from this element down here. I was fine with a couple additional elements though also. Um, I did jack up some of the spectral intensity. I turned that ray count down a little bit. You know, this is where you can kind of begin to mess with some of the angles of some of this stuff as well. Mess with that, where that spectral glow is in fact coming from. 
went into this material, I did crank up some dispersion to get some more interesting colors coming through that glass, some kind of really interesting kind of rainbow prism look. And then let's hop back into the camera in the aperture. I really like seeing a strong aperture edge um, as well as turning down some of that roundness. And I threw in some additional spheres. Let's turn this way down because I know that I made some pretty small spheres in here that I then put in with a cloner object. And we can say render instance. And I just kind of scattered these all over the place. Let's see. And I think I put that same material on this as well. Let's bring this back to 200. I am going to throw a random effector on this also. Bring a radius to 2. I might make another diffuse material, right? Something that's not as intense. Probably just go right into the emission. Say surface brightness. Throw that on that sphere now. You can see now they're kind of a lot smaller. Now we'll add another random effector. And you can see I'm not actually labeling anything, which is not typical of like my workflow. However, for a, an instance like this, um, when I was doing this live and, you know, I had, like I said, 20, 20 minutes or something like that to, to do it from beginning to end and come up with like the concept and work this through. I didn't have a whole lot of time of naming stuff. That wasn't an option. Now I did save when I was there, uh, which I'm not actually doing right now, but you know, I think, uh, I think that's okay for this purpose. All right. So yeah, as we're kind of like getting this, it's starting to come together. I mean, this is, this is where then fine little tweaks started to come in and come into play and also deciding like, Hey, should like, should we come in here and like, should we like begin to crop some of this stuff? Let's see if I can get that focus back in here, you know, like what looks better, you know, something that's a little bit more zoomed out, something that is closer in. Like this all comes into, you know, kind of your own, your kind of own personal thing. Um, you know, I also like adding some, some kind of distortion. So like this will kind of warp it, not really going to be super noticeable unless, you know, you're here while you're kind of doing it. And then what I did was I basically took the same cloner and I can remove that random. And I said, I wanted this to clone onto an object. And the object I wanted it to clone to was this spline is creating that flower here. And I wanted to create it so it was um, in kind of even distribution. And let's maybe actually I went to the cloner on that. Let's see if that works instead. Yeah, there we go. So now it's actually on the flower itself, right? And this was giving some really cool, interesting additional points. If I change the spline path here, because you can see there's kind of a really big gap distance um, where the points are, maybe just something like um, natural. Let's not change the intermediate points. And I'm afraid that if I were to change this from Bezier um, to something different, let's say uniform. There we go. Now we're getting a, a few more points in there. That's what I want. Cool. And then for this, clearly we can increase how many that we want on here. I can throw possibly like another random effector onto this. And with this random effector, obviously rotation is not going to mean anything. I don't really want the position. I mean, if we did position, maybe like slight position, just to kind of give a little variety here um, and then scale. Maybe a uh, negative 0.25, just something to kind of give each one of those slightly something different. I don't know, maybe a little bit more variety in randomization of position could look, could look kind of cool. Yeah, something like that's pretty interesting. And then um, I did like having, getting some of those, like, see these little like star glints that are going around? I'm just going to copy and paste this and maybe have these not go so far scattered all over the place try to bring them back in just a little bit more i think this has a lot to do with the random effector i put on it and so i'm going to do less of a random effector let's kind of move this up a bit i will space these out but i do want them to kind of be mostly centered around the flower itself 
So let's say the same thing with this, like 130. Now let's throw one more random effector onto it. Maybe mess with the parameter so they are beginning to get randomized in position. Um, clearly, I feel like there's way too much little like dusty stuff coming across my screen right now. So let's reduce the overall amount by like half. And maybe even the overall size, make these just a little bit like smaller, tiny glints. I think something like that is pretty good. I might add just a little bit more in though. Let's see, just tweaking that setting. So this is it. This is pretty much where I was able to get to while we were doing that. Um, and, uh, and, you know, when you got to come up with something quick on the spot, I, I think something like this was really good. I think we could do kind of like, uh, I'm at 15 minutes right now. So boom, this is pretty much enough time to render. Obviously, um, my whole goal was to be like, hey, how do you come up with an idea super, super quick with no other additional assets? If you remember, I did mention, it helps to be able to play with kind of a variety of different HDRIs and stuff like that. And you can see as I switch through them, I liked some HDRIs that had and offered maybe a little bit more contrast to them that didn't, you know, capture as much white reflection onto the glass itself. You know, I think and any of these are, are, you know, acting fairly cool, fairly interesting, are going to give us some really cool glass looks. I might just really quick need to come to the post processing here, maybe mess with that cutoff. I might even mess with some glare blur starting to get pretty heavy on that glare maybe increase some of the bloom here maybe take some of that cut off off again right so like this is starting to look fairly interesting to me let's let's keep going with that bloom maybe increase that glare as well i'll probably switch to hdri like I, i'm at 17 minutes Let's see here if I can find something. Maybe bringing back some more of that white reflection could help. This is why I love the HDRI link that brings me to all these various assets. I I, I feel like you know one of these we're gonna we're definitely gonna land on here, and I can always go in if I get it a little bit brighter. I'm not that worried about it because I can always mess with the exposure and kind of gamma overall. So let me just get one here that I like. This one's pretty cool. I think I'm gonna stick with this one. Let's go into our camera imager. I didn't mess with any of this yet. Let's bring that gamma down so we can get a little bit more contrast. Maybe slightly bring this up. Maybe crunch in some of that overexposed area. And, uh, and here we go, that's it. That's how I was able to create my image live on stage at the digital art death match. And once again, you know, come in here, you can still tweak some stuff, maybe give some additional variety here and height, maybe some more variation in the rotation of those pieces. And, uh, and you get a little bit more organic. Perfect. 18 minutes. That's just enough time to, to render this one and, uh, and call it sweet.